Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if you're new here, my name's Ray and I just finished my second year doing physics here at Cambridge. And in the summer of 2019, I achieved 4A stars. And I largely attribute that to both doing Anki flashcards and my organization system. The organization system I'm going to present in this video basically helps me keep on top of everything. So if you wanna jump around between the video, then check out the timestamps below. Otherwise, we'll get straight to it. So the motivation behind my system was that I didn't want anything that was too complex or required too much maintenance. Ideally, you should be spending about like 90% of your time or 95% of your time doing the work, and then the other 5-10% time actually planning and organizing what you're going to be doing next. Spending any more than that probably means your system requires too much maintenance or is a bit too complex. So I would keep that in mind. Anyways, feel free to base your system off mine in this video, but if you find that things aren't working for you, then try and figure out why it's not working and try to come up with your own system. But don't spend too long trying to create the perfect system because otherwise you won't have enough time to do the rest of the work. So feel free to just try my system and make adjustments as you go along yourself and basically fix up anything that you don't think is working for you. So anyway, my system was split into three main parts. And number one being my daily drivers, which included my paper planner, which I have an example of here. Uh, and then my folder, which I kept, always kept in my bag. Uh, this next part was uh, my notion board and past paper tracker, which allowed me to keep track of more long-term things rather than day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week things. And then finally included my archival system in which I just basically put things into a big Leavage folder and uh, hoped that it might come in useful later, which sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. So I think this piece of paper with a bunch of boxes on it is much better than most to-do apps out there. And before I explain why, I'm gonna explain how this works. If you wanna download it yourself and then print it out too, then, and there is a link in the description down below, do bear in mind when you are printing off yourself, then when you go to your uh, printing option, uh, you want to send it to your printer and press print on both sides and then flip on the short edge and not the long edge, because if you flip on the long edge, then it won't come out right. But yeah, that's just a brief um, caveat here. So anyways, you can see that it has seven columns, one for each day of the week, with the weekdays in bold, and then it has nine rows. So I would just put a task in each of these boxes uh, along here, and then as uh, I did that task, I would just cross it out. And if there were certain tasks which I couldn't get done that day, then I would just, inst uh, I would like do a crossed line for it, and then just uh, draw an arrow going to the following day. So I know that I have to do that task that following day. I mean, it looked pretty messy by the end of the week, but I don't think it really mattered because I was just getting it done. Um, and then at the end of the week, I would print out another one of these and then just start the week again. On the back, you can see there is a homework side, uh, which I used to keep track of all the homework I was doing. And there are a few columns over here. So there's the S slash D, which is the set date and due date um, for each of the homeworks. There's S slash T, which is the subjects and teacher. And then there is a description of the homework itself. And then there's C slash R. So the first box being that I've completed the homework, uh, which is C. And then R is that the teacher has received the homework, which means I've handed it in. So I think it's beneficial during my frees because I knew exactly what to be doing uh, that day in every free and like after school too. And when you know exactly what you're doing, then it's much easier to like just get started and not spend the free just sitting around with friends chatting, uh, which I found many other friends did when they had no idea what to be doing. So basically this whole simple system ensured that I was on top of homework and I knew exactly what to be doing on each day and the weekends. And whenever like something new came to mind, then I would just take this out of my pocket and quickly fill it in or add something to another box or just add something onto the homework side. So you can fill this piece of paper up normally, but if you wanna see the most effective way to fill this piece of paper, which I'm not kidding is actually effective, uh, then there is a video in, linked in the description which shows you how to do it. Anyways, I found this to be much better than most to-do apps for a number of reasons. Firstly, with to-do apps, I think it's so easy to just set yourself way too many tasks for one day and just get none of them done. Whereas this, uh, you're only able to set yourself nine tasks on each day. And usually I would only end up setting myself four or five tasks on each day. Um, so I wouldn't feel overwhelmed. And I was making sure I was focusing on, on the big and most important tasks rather than say like 20 minor tasks. Secondly, with apps, you usually have to get your phone out and that can lead you to like checking messages and everything else. Or like you have to turn your phone back on if you're say in a revision session to check what you're doing next. Having a separate paper-based system is much better because like it doesn't require you to use your phone and it means you're less likely to get distracted. Also, I found this to be super useful because I could just pin it up to my wall when I got home and then I could just see the task right in front of me because I had a bad habit of when using to-do apps that when I close the app, then I would just end up forgetting about the app completely and forgetting about having to do that work. 
Whereas when I'm sat down on my computer and I have this up in front of me, then whenever I look up, I just see that I still have tasks to do that day or I have to move them onto another day if I'm not particularly feeling like doing any more work that day. Also, as a minor point, I think it's so much nicer to cross things out using pen rather than just like tapping a button on an app, but that's just me. So next up is a free pen ring binder folder, which I bought from a store called Ryman. Uh, and that's a stationery store in the UK, maybe in other countries, I don't know. But basically this has lasted me the last four years or so. Um, and I've always kept this in my bag. Uh, and then I use some subject dividers, which I bought off Amazon to uh, like sort of separate into a few different sections. So I did four A-levels and I had one section for each of my subjects. And within each, each section, I usually had two plastic wallets, uh, one for each teacher because I usually had two teachers for each subject. I think I bought 50 of these plastic wallets from Ryman for about eight pounds. Um, they sell like thicker ones and thinner ones and I prefer the thicker ones because whilst they are a bit more expensive, they last so much longer as well. So basically I would put any unfinished homework that I had for a teacher in this folder and then I would be doing the homeworks so during my freeze or something. And once I completed the homework, I would just stick it into the end of the folder where I also had some more plastic wallets, uh, which meant that during the lesson, when they were collecting in homework, then I would just turn straight to the back and then pull out the homework from there. So during the lessons, we either had to use a class book or some refill pad paper. Now I had two types of refill pads. The first one being the Oxford Campus refill pad, uh, which is a little expensive, but the paper is really nice. Uh, I think it's like 90 GSM, uh, so 90 grams per square meter. And yeah, I found it to be pretty convenient um, for when making notes in class. And I usually stored this at the front of my uh, daily folder. So I just take out some sheets and stick it to the front because carrying a 300 page refill pad in your bag alongside some textbooks and everything else just makes it so much heavier, but uh, that's just me. And then the next refill pad I used was a much cheaper Ryman Essentials refill, refill pad, which is also 300 pages. Uh, but 70 uh, GSM. So the paper is much thinner and I usually use this paper for doing any homework or like doing rough work or basically anything that wasn't to do with making notes in class. And these are like really cheap. So you can get about six of these, each being 300 pages uh, for about 10 pounds from the Ryman website. So I had my refill pad paper at the beginning uh, and then during the lesson when we were making notes or something, I would like take out a few sheets, make notes on that and then I would stick it into a relevant section uh, depending on whichever subject I was in. So if I made some maths notes, then I would like, uh, after the lesson was done, I would just stick in one of the wallets for whichever teacher I had because I had two wallets in each section. And I'd also stick any homework in there and then do the homework, everything like that. So now after a teacher finished the topic, rather than keeping all the papers in my bag, I would take them out. And then at home, I would make flashcards on them, uh, which I explain more in my A-level workflow video, which if it's out, should be linked somewhere up right now. And then I would stick those class notes, which I just made flashcards on, into a larger Leverage folder. So I had one large Leverage folder for each subject, uh, one for maths, for maths, physics, and chemistry. And I roughly kept in order of the specification. And any class notes and stuff, and any homeworks or topics tests I did, I just stick in this to, into this folder and use it for reference later. I usually checked through my flashcards every day, so I would never really have to look over my class notes that often because I turned uh, my notes from class into flashcards. So things that I usually used for reference was either some tricky maths question or some complicated chemical synthesis reaction, whatever. And then every couple of months, as this larger Leverage folder filled up, then I would go through it and then like just throw away any topic tests that I think I didn't need anymore or did well enough, or basically just anything that I thought was no longer useful. So now for the digital parts of my organization system, I used a Kanban board to keep track of like more long-term activities of progressing through say larger topics and adding stuff onto my flashcards and making flashcards. Um, so I used a Kanban board on an app called Trello during my A-levels, but now I use an app called Notion, which also has this Kanban board feature. So if you haven't heard of Notion, then I would highly recommend finding a video online and watching the video online and basically learning how to use it because it's really useful. Um, anyway, this is the Notion board that I have. And if you want to uh, duplicate this board and um, use it for yourself, then there should be a link in the description to duplicate it um, and use this as some template. Anyways, you can see that I have a few columns. I have a to-do, doing uh, topics done, other done, and then practical endorsements. So I just like to keep track of which practical endorsements I was doing for my A-levels. Um, and I kept everything in one board 
uh, and then just use filters uh, for subjects. So if I press filter, add filter, uh, and then do say subject uh, is uh, say physics, then I can see all the physics tasks I have. So I've done all these topics, uh, which is basically the whole A-level spec because I finished with A-levels. And if I click on some of these topics, then I can see I have a checklist here. And this checklist basically helps me keep track of uh, what I was adding onto my flashcards. You can find more about it that in my A-level workflow video. Um, and then I also had to do tasks like the remaining physics workbooks or like this past paper. Um, so let's say I go to my chemistry tasks. Um, I have some past papers which I need to do. Uh, so I would uh, decide which past papers I want to do on which day. So I would do these two and then I would change the dates to say uh, today if I can find today uh, and then do the same for the other paper too. And now the nice thing about Notion is that I can switch to calendar view and then just see this and I can see I have these two papers due today and let's say once I've done the papers then and I've marked them and everything I will just uh, drag these over into other done and that would be it. Also, it can be a bit um, difficult to just switching like, I don't know, topic or... If you want to see all your subjects in one view, then it's better to remove this filter and then to make another view. So for board view, if I dupl duplicate this view, then I can change this to say, uh, copy of board view to chemistry view instead. So let's change that to chemistry. And then if I add the filter, uh, then I can do add filter, uh, subject, uh, and then chemistry. And now it shows everything to do with chemistry. And if I want to see everything else, rather than removing the filter and adding it again, I can just switch back to board view. Uh, and now I can see physics too. And for this, like, um, if you know a little bit about Notion, then you can see that you can add properties and change some of these properties. So if you don't actually do further maths, then you can just completely delete the further maths tag or just rename other tags. Yeah, basically learn how to use Notion, it's very useful. So to keep track of other long-term tasks, I also had a past paper tracker board. Um, and this was just on Google Sheets. Uh, so I had one for sort of every subject. Uh, and if I go back to the chemistry board, um, or the physics board in this case, then you can see I put in all my scores for all these different past papers. Some years they didn't have any past papers. And then I added a like small comment about like how I did in that paper and the raw marks I got. Um, if you want to download this yourself, then there is a link in the description down below to download it. But it was really useful for the time it came to doing past papers and keeping track of which past papers I wanted to do and then which ones to redo as well. So like this one I did particularly bad on um, and I wanted to redo. So then I redid it like a few weeks later or something and I did better on that. Um, so like when exam times uh, com comes around uh, two to three months before your exams and you're doing a bunch of past papers, then having a Google Sheet to keep track of them is really useful. So that's basically it for my organization system. If you want to see how a few parts tied together, then I would recommend checking my A-level workflow video. Hopefully this system wasn't too complicated and you can try some parts out yourself and see what you like and don't like and then just sort of use that for yourself. Uh, if you found the video useful, then do like and share and stuff like that. And I will see you next time. Bye.